So the very first thing that we need to do to the short ribs is get them ready to dry brine. So put the short ribs on a plate, sprinkle quite liberally with kosher salt on all sides. Now the dry brine does two things. Number one, it helps tenderize the meat. Number two, it gives the short ribs a fantastic flavor. When I do pick out short ribs, I try to go for the thickest ones I could find. These ones are about two inches thick and they have a nice marbling throughout them. Chuck them in the refrigerator overnight. So the next day we need to gather some ingredients. We got pearl onions, mini gold potatoes, tomato paste. I'm using fresh sage, but you could use rosemary, thyme, whatever you want. And of course the Guinness. You could tell that the dry brining process has really had an effect on the meat by the change in color. And it's gonna pull out a bunch of moisture that's in the meat also. So we need to make sure that pat that dry. I mean, look at all that moisture on the plate. We definitely don't wanna have any kind of moisture on the ribs when we go to to pan stir them. Large saute pan over medium high heat, two tablespoons of oil go into the pan. You want to make sure that that pan is heated all the way through. I heat it to the point of it literally starting to smoke. Carefully place the short ribs into the saute pan and let them sear on all sides for about minute, minute and a half per side. And this is what we're looking for right there, that beautiful caramelized crust on the outside of it. So once you see color like that, go ahead and turn the rib over onto the next side and continue searing that side minute, minute and a half. I like to hit it with black pepper also. We're really starting to develop the flavors already at this point in time. The ribs have a nice beautiful caramelized flavor to them. We have nice seasoning on them. This whole process will take about five to six minutes. Once the short ribs have been seared on all sides, go ahead and put them on a plate and set them aside. Now there is a lot of oil and fat that has been accumulated in that pan, so I pour all of it out except for one tablespoon. Now I drop in six ounces of tomato paste and I'm gonna cook it in that fat that's in the pan and I'm gonna cook the tomato paste for about 30 seconds, stirring very frequently. Now deglaze the pan with your beer. This is gonna take two beers. The first beer I like to pour in very, very slowly because this is a hot pan, cold liquid, it's gonna splatter. Just be very careful at this point. Go ahead and drop in the second beer and I'm gonna stir the tomato paste into the beer while I'm scraping the bottom of the pan, getting up all of those beautiful brown caramelized bits on the bottom of the pan, okay? That's the whole point of deglazing. Now I want to bring this beer up to a simmer and that tomato paste is actually kind of incorporate fully into the beer as it warms up. So I trade that spoon out with a whisk to really help with that. Once the beer has come up to a slight simmer, drop in the onions, the garlic, the sage, and now we're going to put in those ribs that have been resting on the plate to the side. And of course you want to be careful at this point because that liquid is hot and you don't want to accidentally splash yourself with the hot liquid. Now once the ribs have been added all to the pan, I like to hit them with a little bit more black pepper, a little pinch of salt. Just be careful not to over salt because everything is going to be a little bit more salty once everything kind of reduces in the oven at the end of the cooking time. Four cups of beef stock go into the pan. I don't want to add too much beef stock where they completely cover the ribs. It's better when the ribs are poking out a little bit from the top. Crank up the heat to high. Bring this braising liquid up to a boil. Now I taste the braising liquid to see where the seasoning are at once again and I add a little bit more salt if necessary. Once the liquid has come up to a boil, I kill the heat, put a lid on it, and chuck that entire thing into the oven. That's going to be in a preheated oven 300 degrees and that's going to go for three to three and a half hours in the last hour and a half of the cooking time i'll actually like to toss in the potatoes into the oven as well they're actually going to get cooked separately in this glass pyrex dish so hit the potatoes with a tablespoon of oil nice pinch of coaster salt and of course some black pepper freshly cracked I gently roll them around in the oil and the seasoning just to ensure that they are evenly coated with the seasoning. Top the potatoes off with some fresh sage and chuck them into the oven. Each plate I like to serve with honey glazed carrots which is three whole carrots per plate. Cut off the ends of the carrots and peel them. Roll them around in a little bit of oil. Now we're going to bake these in a separate glass fire dish. I'm just using some of the residual oil that's in the other dish. Hit the carrots with a little bit of salt and of course some black pepper. Toss them in the oven those are going to take about 45 minutes. We will get to the honey glazed part momentarily. So I found that beef short ribs actually taste a lot better the next day, but of course you could have them right out of the oven just like that. I mean, these are definitely full of flavor. They are incredibly tender. I just find that the flavors are a lot better if they sit in that brazen liquid in the refrigerator overnight. They really suck up that flavor in that brazen liquid, giving them even more flavor. So the reheating process is incredibly simple. You'll notice that there's a fat cap on the top of that, so I definitely want to make sure to skim most of that fat off. I mean, you're not going to be able to get all of it, but definitely want to get 90% of it. I like to keep a little bit of it because it's going to add even more flavor. Carefully place that liquid into a pan that's going to be big enough to hold the brazen liquid and all those short ribs. Now the ribs that you're looking at right now is actually a different batch. I did not add any tomato paste to these ones. They're short ribs as I showed in the video that brazen liquid is going to have a little bit more red tint to it. 
Now that everything's in the pan, go ahead and put that on the stovetop over medium high heat and bring that liquid up to a simmer for about 10 minutes. Now we're going to want to make sure the ribs are heated all the way through before they pull them out of the liquid. This is the best way to reheat short ribs because they stay super moist. Now we crank up the heat and we're going to simmer that braising liquid and it's going to reduce to about a third of what it was. We're really concentrating the flavors here. So you could tell that it's thick enough by getting a spoon and just wiping your finger on the back of the spoon. If the sauce holds its shape, then you fully reduce. Off the heat, I whisk in 4 tablespoons cold unsalted butter till it is fully melted into the sauce. This is going to give the sauce a beautiful flavor and it's going to give it a little bit more body. I really like going heavy on the black pepper so of course I'm going to hit it with a little bit more pepper, stir that in and give the sauce a taste and adjust seasoning if necessary. I love how thick that is, optionally you can strain it. Once the carrots have been cooked all the way through about 45 minutes, I top them with about a tablespoon's worth of honey and they're going to get placed back into the oven for about 5 minutes. Once the potatoes are cooked all the way through about an hour and fork tender, I lightly smash them down on the cutting board using a knife. It would probably be a lot safer if you use a metal spatula or a big spoon. For all this to come together, we're going to put everything on a plate. I put five of those crushed potatoes onto the plate, three of the honey glazed carrots. Now I'm arranging them on the plate to make them look nice. I mean, I'm taking photographs of this later, but you know, go ahead and plate them however you want. I really like the color of the orange and the black plate. I think it looks really, really nice. And to top everything off, a little bit of that beautiful Guinness and beef sauce that has been nicely reduced has such a fantastic flavor now the ribs are incredibly tender they have a ton of flavor i absolutely love this dish the honey on the carrots actually help really tame down the bitterness that's in the beer there is a beautiful balance of flavors tender Guinness braised short ribs, mini gold potatoes, honey glazed carrots. Absolutely delicious. For another incredible recipe, hit that recipe card that you're seeing on the screen and I will see you there. Damn, that looks good.